In this example, we'll use u substitution again to integrate 6x squared times the entire function 2x cubed plus 17 all to the fifth power. After some of the ones we've done earlier, this one actually won't be very hard. It looks really complicated in this form, but what you'll see is that it simplifies quite nicely. Just like we've done before, we want to start by looking at this and figuring out what basic structure it fits. Which of those basic forms that we know how to integrate fits this pattern? It's not one of the trig functions, so we can ignore that. It's not e to the x or 2 to the x or something like it, so we can ignore that. And it's not the reciprocal function, which kind of just leaves the power rule, x to the power of n. And if you look closely, it roughly looks like something to the power of 5. There's that extra piece of 6x squared. We'll worry about that in just a second. For now, just think about how it looks like something to the power of 5. So the overall structure, if we had, instead of something complicated to the power of 5, if we just had our variable u to the power of 5, we could integrate that and get 1 sixth u to the sixth plus c. So that's what we want to start with, is figuring out what basic form we have. Once we do that, that tells us immediately what we want u to be. We want u to be all of this. And immediately, once we pick u, once we decide on the value, we will find du. And du is always the derivative of u times dx. In this case, the derivative of 2x cubed plus 17 is 6x squared, and then we add on dx, or multiply dx. Now notice what happened. That 6x squared that appears in the original problem, that combined with the dx is going to all get replaced with du, and that will simplify things tremendously. Which gives us another hint as to how to start these problems. If you're struggling to start a u substitution problem, if you're having a hard time picking out what u should be, try looking for two pieces to the problem and see if one of them looks like the derivative of the other. So in this case, we have the two pieces, the 2x cubed plus 17, which happens to be raised to the fifth power, and we have 6x squared. And just by looking at those powers, x cubed and x squared, that gives us a hint that the 6x squared kind of looks like the derivative of 2x cubed. In our case, it happens to be exactly the derivative, but if it were off by a constant, if, say, for instance, that 6 weren't there, could you still work with this? You could, in the same way we've done some of the earlier ones, if all we had was x squared and dx, we could divide this over here and replace x squared and dx with 1 sixth du. So we could still make it work if we were off by a constant. In this case, we happen to be just fine because we have exactly du in our original problem. So there are a couple of ways to think about how to substitute u. One is look for the basic structure you have from that list of basic integrals. Another is to think about, is there a piece of this that looks like the derivative of another piece? And if so, that gives you a hint as to what u and du can be since du is the derivative of u. Just one other way to look at these problems. In any case, we can make our substitution now. So the 2x to the third plus 17 all gets replaced with u. So we have u to the fifth power. And then the 6x squared times dx gets replaced with du. And so we've simplified tremendously. The problem has simplified to a much, much a more concise form, and one that we know the answer to. So right away we can write down the answer to this integral is 1 sixth u to the sixth plus c. And then we're almost done. The last step is just to replace u back with the expression in terms of x, because we want the answer to use the same variable as the question. And with that, we're done. As always, we could check the answer using differentiation using the chain rule, we could check to make sure that when you take the derivative of that, you end up with this right here. And if you do, you'll find that it does indeed work. So that's the answer there. 
using U substitution. This one, the two pieces ended up working just right to make the substitution as simple as possible, but even if it were off by a constant, it would be fine. Let's see an example like that. Let's start with something like x times e to the x squared. And again, looking at this, you want to figure out what basic structure you're working with. It's not x to a power, it's not 1 over x, it's not a trig function, it's really e to the power of something. Now there's that extra x hanging out in front, which could mess us up, but you might have an idea of where that's going to go, having seen the last few examples. You might imagine that x is going to get used up when we substitute for du, and that's exactly what happens. So the general form to this one is the integral of e to the u. You could also think about it in the same way as the one we just did, where you look at two pieces, one of which kind of looks like the derivative of the other. We have x squared, and we have x, and x is kind of similar to the derivative of x squared. It isn't exactly right, but it's only off by a factor of 2. The derivative of x squared is 2x, so it's close enough to x that we can work with it. So either way you think about it, you can figure out that u, the substitution we want to make, is u equals x squared. Immediately we find du by taking the derivative, and then look at how we can substitute. So we want to match up the pieces that we have to work with. This right here will get replaced with u, and then the x and the dx together we want to replace. We don't quite have that working here, but we're only off by a factor of 2. So we can move the 2 over to the other side by dividing. And now we do have exactly x dx that we can replace with 1 half du. So that division by a constant happens all the time in these examples, and it's something you should get very, very familiar with and very comfortable with. Once we see that, we can make our substitutions, and we end up with 1 half e to the u du. Notice I put the 1 half out in front just because that's the way we're more used to writing it, and it looks better that way. But e to the x squared got replaced with e to the u, and then x dx got replaced with 1 half du. Now we can integrate. The 1 half gets carried along for the ride. e to the u integrates to give us e to the u, and we have plus c at the end. And then the last step is just to replace u back with x squared. So there's our final answer. And as always, we could check by differentiating. So these two examples illustrate the same kind of pattern where it looks really complicated, but when you look closely, there are, broadly speaking, two parts to the problem, one of which is close to, or in one case exactly equal to, the derivative of the other. And so if you arrange your u and du carefully, you can make the problem much, much simpler, and it'll fit one of these patterns. So just look carefully for what pattern each of these problems fits, and if it helps, you can think about, is one of these pieces similar to the derivative of the other? Maybe off by a constant, but we can deal with that.